Because if it is, then what happens is the only place you read about Christ ruling, really, is, Re is Revelation chapter 20. And it just say he's going to rule for a thousand years. And after that, Satan going to be loose for a little season. But it don't give you no detail on how Christ going to rule, how Jerusalem going to be. Revelation don't give you none of that. So they say. But no, it do. I just believe that they're trying to teach a doctrine that is not supported by the prophets. I'm not dissing the apostles. But I understand the apostles and the prophets to work in one accord. That's right. Okay, now, excuse me. I'm done with that. I got these five texts. We're we going to go through these last five texts because I wanted to say this part. I believe that the Bible, not Zadok, the Bible has shown great similarities between what John saw in his vision, what the angel told John, the prophets would explain about the mystery of God and the prophets that we read. We read three or four different prophets. So all of them, they all talking about the son kingdom. Only John saw the father's kingdom. For, for real, y'all? So them seeing Christ's kingdom is established. But John seeing the kingdom of the father isn't established by any other witness other than him? For man... Because the Bible don't talk against itself. It ain't going to tell us that every matter shall be established by two or three witnesses. And then we could just go to one prophet who speak one thing and that's just it. Everywhere in the Bible, anything that has ever come up on prophecy, we've always had another witness to it. And like when Daniel seen his visions, he was showed his visions two or three different ways. Okay, let's get out of here, y'all. What about the sea? Because want no more seed. <laughs> That's the last piece to the mysterious puzzle. Well, let's go here, y'all. Let's go to Revelation 13. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Revelation 13. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. And when you get there, Brother Tim, you could go ahead and you could start reading. And because, I stood, oh, no, go ahead. Yeah, you did. And I stood upon the sea and saw the beast excuse me, rise up out of the sea, having seven hands and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. All right. So we understand this here to be an amalgamation of kingdoms. Okay? But what I'm supposed now, I'm not taking away from the fact that there is really a sea on earth. Or that fish living in water creatures and stuff. You could go and read another part. I think it's Revelation 10 where you talk about um, uh, 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 a big boulder falling out of the firmament hitting the waters called Wormwood. And he said a third of the fishes in the sea died and a third of the ships was destroyed. But you know one thing about all them plagues? That happened when the seven, uh, uh, as the sixth trumpet sounded and the seven plagues started to get poured out. Everything that happened was in thirds. So that's a whole nother mystery in itself. And we're not going to deal with that today. But it's fun. This is fun. <laughs> is this not fun? This is fun. I don't know if y'all having fun right now. See, I'm having fun right now. Because it's just good to be like, hold on. Look at all of this evidence. Look at all of this evidence. Now, we... Now look, John said he stood on the sand of the sea. So I'm standing on sand, and this is the sea. And I saw a beast come up out of the sea. That was a government that came up out of the water. Let's see another time that this was shown. Uh, similarly, go to Daniel. Because see, John once again having a vision, something coming out of the sea. Has anyone else ever seen anything come out of the sea? A beast come out of the sea? Good. Let's go to Daniel 7, verses 1 through 3. Just to establish, Daniel saw something come up out of the sea. 
Daniel 7 verses 1 through 3. When you got it, bro, you could go right into it. We almost done, y'all. We got four more after this. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and a vision in his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea, and the four beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another. Okay, we, you know, y'all know what that is, I think, if you don't read it on your own time. He saw four beasts come out of the sea. So here goes Daniel, in the vision of his head, he see the sea, and he see four beasts come out the sea. And we understand later on through interpretation that them four beasts was what, y'all? Four kingdoms. We understand in Revelation that beast that came out of the sea where John was standing on the sea on, 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 on the beach with his toes in the sand. And he looked up and saw a beast, seven-headed, ten-horned beast come out the sea. What did that beast represent? Kingdoms. Oh. So if we know the beasts aren't literal, then the sea represents something too. But the one thing is this, is that... John was shown a vision, but notice how he talked about the sea. He didn't talk about it like it was a allegory sea, like I stood upon an allegory sea. <laughs> an allegory sand and saw an allegory beast come out the allegory sea. He never said that like that. He just talked about the sea like it's the sea, didn't he? Well, in Revelation 21, no more heaven, no more a uh, new heaven, new earth, and the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. He talked about that the same way. I ain't seen no more sea. But the other time I was standing on the sand, I saw the sea and I saw the beast come out the sea. Because if this isn't talking about the literal ocean or sea, as I believe, then it has to be talking about sea in another context in Revelation 21. Let's see if it's possible what it might be. Go to Revelation 17, brother, verses 1 through 3. Revelation 17, verses 1 through 3. We got three more left. Revelation 7. Oh, I'm sorry. Four more left. How was not that? How was not that together? Okay. Um, Revelation 17, verses 1 through 3. As soon as you got it, bro, you can do it. <clears throat> and there came one of the seven angels, which have the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So she, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven hands and ten horns. Cool, cool. That's good. Now, he saw this woman, and side, side, look, the woman has sat upon many waters. How? Because the beasts sit upon many waters. That's all sea is, is a collection of many waters. Remember, he never called the seas in the beginning of creation in Genesis. It said the water called he what? Seas. And the land he called earth. He never called the water oceans, rivers, lakes, ponds, and streams and seas. Those are different sizes, different sized bodies of water. He let man name that and he understand it because he gave man the ability to do it. But when he made everything, all the water on the earth was called seas. Just remember that. So when he talk about the sea, y'all, just, you know what I mean? Just be in the moment with me. I'm in the moment right now. I'm in the zone. He said, look, the dude took me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Now, is, is this the same wilderness where the woman in Revelation 12 had took wings like an eagle and fled into the wilderness for three and for, for um time times and a half a time? Because everybody teaching this wilderness doctrine. Well, what wilderness is this woman in? Who riding upon a scarlet colored beast? He didn't say she yo, he took me to another wilderness that's different from the wilderness of Revelation 12. Is that what John said? John said, yo. In one vision, he say, I saw the woman fly into the wilderness. Not a wilderness. The wilderness. Now, this man taking me into the wilderness, and guess who there? The woman. Is this the same wilderness that the woman in Revelation 12 flew into for, for, for safety? Prove it's not the same wilderness. Prove it. You can't. 
But let's go ahead. Um, so this woman sit upon many waters, bro. Go ahead and skip down to verse 15 and give us the understanding on that. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth our peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So what do the water represent? The nations. Peoples, multitudes, nations and tongues. Okay, so now that we've established that, let's look at something. Go to Isaiah 57, one verse, verse 20. Three left. Isaiah 57, verse 20. I thank y'all for sticking around. I hope that this is just sparking some kind of hold up, wait a minute, let me pump the brakes kind of thought in, in, in those who was just taken away with the father kingdom and the son kingdom separate doctrine. And for those who may not even really look at the kingdom, if somebody come to you and say, well, this is the father kingdom and the son kingdom, what did you have to say, yay or nay? What did you have? Anything. Because someone would sit up and snatch somebody from you. You trying to teach someone about the establishment in the kingdom of God, and then here come another quote unquote Israelite coming along, like, well, you know, um, yeah, man, you, what you're seeing there is the, the son kingdom and the father kingdom. They're two separate kingdoms. What you gonna do? Say he or she is a liar? And if you do, what you got to at least paint the picture on why you think that they're wrong. That's what this is about. Arming ourselves. And if you find something more than what I'm putting on the table today, please share it, because I'm just trying to load up. I'm, I'm, I'm stocking for the war. I need all kind of ammunition. So go ahead, bro. Um, chapter 57 of Isaiah, that one verse, verse 20. Verse 20? Yep. But the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest. Those waters cast up mire and dirt. Oh, so the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, and the waters cast up mire and dirt. So it's like a turbulent sea, the wicked are. The wicked are compared to that, but we see that the nation, who more wicked than the nations, peoples, and tongues? That's the wicked. The nations outside of the commandments of God are wicked. You want to know how to prove? Because every beast that came up out of that sea was what? Wicked. The, the beast is a result of what's in the water. What's in the sea? Wickedness. It's nothing. All this symbolism is trying to teach us something. You see the sea. And then you see this beast come out the sea. And every beast that came out the sea wreaked, wreaked havoc on the earth and was what? In total opposition to the kingdom of God. Is that correct? So the sea ain't... Look, the sea is evil. The beast evil and the sea evil. And the wicked are the troubled sea. Let us go another place. Go to Jude. The book of Jude, verse 13. The book of Jude, verse 13. Remember in Luke 21... When Christ said that there would be... Well, I'll I, I quote it after this. Go ahead to Jude and read verse 13. Now, he's talking about the wicked among the saints and bringing in his blasphemy and that they're not really there for the kingdom of God, but they are there to establish their own greed and their own lust and to try and have rulership over the people of God. And look what he called the wicked. Jude, verse 13. Raging waves of the sea foaming out of their own shame wandering stars to whom is re re reserved the blackness of darkness forever <laughs> he called them what bro raging waves raging of the sea waves. that's how the sea is troubled because when you see a sea and you see that the waves is crashing he letting you know that the raging waves of the sea are the violent the wicked of the earth who are causing trouble. So he told you in Isaiah, all the wicked, this is what they is. They the troubled sea with the crashing and foaming waves. Here he letting you know, hey, y'all got wicked people in the church, man. Y'all got raging waves in the church, foaming they shame. They wandering stars reserved to the blackness and darkness forever. But it's something else that's interesting. Our next scripture is um, Isaiah 60 verses 1 through 5. And we got two more. No, 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 no. One more. Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 5. You know, people get caught up in everything. They don't even understand how, how the Messiah talked. The, uh, uh, where was it? Uh, Luke, Luke 21. Uh, the Messiah said that there would be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. 
and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. 